In this video we're going to learn about semantic segmentation and I'll first cover some basic theory and then we'll jump straight into coding in PyTorch, a project I recently open sourced. So let's dig into it. So what exactly is semantic segmentation? So it's a computer vision task where the goal is to assign a single class to a single pixel. So you can see on the image there, uh, certain pixels belong to the road, some pixels belong to the sidewalk, uh, pedestrians, trees, etc. If you have all of this information, it's really easy to also do, uh, for example, object detection, because, for example, you just take the pedestrian, you just draw, draw a bounding box around the pedestrian, and you also know it's a pedestrian, so you already did classification. The main metric for this task is something called mean uh, intersection over union, and it's pretty simple to, to understand. So basically, uh, you want to see the prediction your model made, for, for example, for a single pedestrian, and you want to see the, the intersection between the prediction and the ground truth, i.e. The, the, the true labels uh, there. And the, the, the bigger the intersection, the better the metric and it intuitively makes sense and you can see the nice image with the squares there. So it's used in all kinds of applications. The two main ones that fall into my mind are autonomous vehicles and the second one would be maybe mixed reality. I'm probably biased because I worked on HoloLens. The neural network that we'll be using in the code is DeepLab V3. So let me just briefly mention the DeepLab family. So it started, uh, it was developed by Google and it started from V1 all the way to V3 plus. That's the, the newest model. But we are using V3 because it has official PyTorch implementation. So it's really simple to use. On the screen on the top left, you can see the input image. And in the bottom right, you can see the actual output I got with DeepLab V3. The model itself was trained uh, on the Pascal VOC 2012 dataset. Uh, which has uh, 21 classes, so 20 classes, uh, foreground classes and one background class. And the classes uh, compass, uh, so I, I already mentioned background, we also have like person, airplane, bird, etc. Because it was trained on 21 classes, the output has 21 channels and the spatial resolution is the same as the input image. That's how uh, semantic segmentation uh, problem works. So how you get the most probable class for a single pixel is this. You, you, you just take, so you take a certain X, Y coordinate and you get 21 numbers, right? Because you have 21 channels and wherever the highest number is, that's the highest probability, uh, that's the class that's the most probable for that specific pixel. Say channel zero had the the biggest probability, that means uh, background is the highest probability class for that specific pixel. It's as easy as that. The model you can see on the screen is actually FCN and not DeepLab, but the output shape is the thing I want you to see here. So it's 21 and the spatial resolution is the same as the input image as I already mentioned. Okay, enough theory, let's jump into the code. This code is actually a whole uh, a neural style transfer uh, video creation pipeline, but we'll be focusing only on a single component and that's the segmentation. So let's see what the, what the code looks like. So the extract person mask from frames uh, function basically takes an input frame and just extracts the, 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 the pixels where the person is present. So line 55, we just uh, like a regular PyTorch thing. We just figure out whether the user has GPU or CPU. GPUs are always preferable when training, uh, when using, when using neural uh, neural networks. Uh, then we just uh, instantiate uh, DeepLab V3 uh, model with the ResNet 101 uh, backbone, and we we set pre-train to true because we wanna. Uh, have a pre-trained model obviously we put it to the gpu if we have one and we set the model to the e evaluation mode because uh, certain layers like batch normalization and dropout will behave differently if we don't set this and we'll have some wrong outputs next up we uh, create these transforms which will be applied to every single frame so we want to uh, maybe specify certain height and width because if we uh, maybe our GPU doesn't have enough uh, VRAM and it will just give you a CUDA out of memory exception if we have a uh, too big of a frame. So then we convert it to Tensor, to PyTorch Tensor, and we do uh, normalization uh, using ImageNet's uh, statistics. And this is just uh, because of the way that the PyTorch models were trained, we have to do this processing step. <clears throat> uh, then we just create a uh, image folder out of the uh, frames that we want to process, uh, also standard uh, PyTorch thing, and we create a data loader uh, and set the batch size to, 
for example, four or something, because we want to use the processing, the parallel processing power of GPUs. Next steps are uh, after figuring out whether the output directories are empty uh, or full. This is like a cache mechanism. If they are already have some frames, we're going to just skip this uh, stage in the pipeline. But if they are empty, we want to proceed. And we wrap all of this into this torch no grad context because we are doing inference. And otherwise, uh, PyTorch will create computational graphs by default which will allocate lots of memory and eat up your VRAM. So you want to you wanna do this step, it's really important. Next important thing is we just iterate through, uh, through the, uh, this uh, data loader and we get image batches. And we, we just, uh, this line 84, we just place the batch onto the GPU because the model is also on GPU. So you want to have tensors as well as the model on the same device. Otherwise you'll get some error. Uh, and we just do the inference here. We pass uh, the image batch uh, into the segmentation deep lab with three model. And because the output is actually order dictionary, uh, this is just like a sign, like a thing you, you gotta do. You just extract the actual output using this out. And then uh, we place the, that resulting batch to the CPU and convert it to NumPy. Afterwards, we iterate through the result batch which as I already mentioned contains, so it's a, uh, the dimension is N, where the N is the number of, uh, like the batch size, then 21, because we have 21 output channels and then height and width, the same as the uh, input frames. The out CPU is the, has the shape I mentioned, so 21 uh, channels and height and width as the input frame. And this is the main step. So we do the arg max, so that actually finds the thing I mentioned in the theoretical part. So we just find the channel where we have the uh, highest probability for that specific pixel. And then the this equal equal person channel index will figure out the pixels where the person class was the highest probable one on the image. So we just get a mask. Doing this, we get a person mask, i.e. we get the, we'll have like a Boolean value true on those pixels where the person was present. As simple as that. And then just some bureaucracy here uh, times 255 will convert booleans into uh, 0 to 255 uh, binary image and converting it to uh, just explicitly converting it here to NumPy uh, unsigned integer 8 uh, type. After this, we just do this post processing step. But before we uh, dig into that part of the code, I want to briefly also cover some theory behind uh, the heuristics that will be used in that specific function. What it will do is it will just clean up some, some components that the model uh, spuriously outputted, uh, which are erroneous. So we just want to clean the, the uh, do some post-processing, and that's pretty common in computer vision. You usually have these hybrid approaches where the deep learning pipeline produces something and you just want to do some cleaning afterwards. So there are two things you want to know here. The first one is connected components algorithm and the second one is the uh, morphological filtering operations. So connected components are pretty simple. We as humans can easily tell that the square is not connected to the circle, uh, i.e. There, uh, th there doesn't exist some, uh, like com some, some path of white pixels that's connecting them. And what the algorithm should do here is just uh, assign a different label to every one of these components, like uh, label zero for background, label one for square, label two for circle. Having that information, we can easily extract the circle or whatever component that we want. And the colored image on the right just uh, visualizes the thing I mentioned. So it just visualizes the labels. So the second thing you need to know about is morphological filtering. And you basically take the binary uh, image as the input and you just process it with something called the structuring element or the kernel, which is also a binary, a simple binary mask. And you can either do erosion where you get like the smaller area, like you can see the J letter got smaller there, or you can do uh, something called deletion where you get uh, the like bigger area. And the way you, you implement this is if you, if you know something about logic gates, this is pretty much a multiple uh, input uh, and for the erosion or multiple uh, input or gate for the uh, deletion, pretty simple. So finally, uh, opening is something we'll be using actually, 
and that's just a combination, just a sequential, you, you just sequentially apply first erosion and then dilation. And it makes sense because if you see the input image before uh, doing the uh, opening operation, you have those small dots. After doing erosion, they will disappear. And after doing dilation, you'll just, uh, you'll just be left with the J letter, which will get to its previous uh, size, initial size. So on this slide, you can see a concrete example of the person mask I got using DeepLab with three model. And you can see by doing the opening, we'll just kind of split that uh, small component uh, that shouldn't be, shouldn't supposed to be there. And then uh, after figuring out connected components and finding the second biggest one, uh, the first being background, the second being person, we'll be able to keep only the, the person uh, pixels. Simple as that. Back to the code, we can now figure out what the post-processing method actually uh, does. And if we go jump here, uh, you can see that on line 26, we just create a kernel. Uh, so that's the structuring element I mentioned in, uh, in the morphological filtering uh, slide. And it's just a simple square of ones. And after applying the, uh, using OpenCV's morphological uh, function, we just uh, apply it to the mask and we get the this this thing called open mask which is uh, the the in initial uh, mask from the deep lab model uh, after applying opening operation so then we just do connected components on the open mask and we get the labeled image out now given that labeled image uh, from the connected components algorithm we need to figure out which a component belongs to the background so we take the upper part of the labeled image so the first 10% of the of the image and just count and see what's the most frequent uh, value in that space. I call that uh, discriminant subspace. And the most common uh, value is something we assume to be the background component, background uh, label. And we get the background index uh, here on line 37. The next step is to create a list of uh, tuples where each tuple contains a connected component uh, components label and area and after that's uh, line 43 and after sorting those according to the size of those areas and just filtering out the the, the background label that we found above uh, using the discriminant subspace uh, we are left off with uh, the, the the first biggest component after the background that which is we assume to be person and we just grab the uh, the using the so th this this here it takes the the, the biggest uh, leftover component and the zero just grabs the uh, label so I'm left with person index and after um, after just checking which pixels uh, contain exactly this label I'm left only with person pixels it's pretty simple if I go ahead and only visualize the mass that came out directly from the model we get a result like this. And you can notice uh, certain components here which do not belong to the person um, mask and which should be removed, obviously. So if I just uh, go inside the uh, post-processing method and after doing the morphological uh, operations, we get this. And you can see on the right that uh, the erosion already fixed this uh, concrete uh, mask. Uh, but in some other cases, we'll need connected components to remove uh, the other connected components which do not belong to the person. So that covers the semantic segmentation uh, theory and code. Uh, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, uh, consider subscribing and consider uh, sharing uh, this video. And see you next time.